So hey everyone, my name's Alex and I'm a master's student supervised by Michael Bowling. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about Go Exploit, which is an alternative training strategy for Alpha Zero that brings about more effective exploration. So in this talk, I'm gonna go over Alpha Zero and its existing exploration strategies. And then I'm gonna use that to motivate some guiding principles we used when developing Go Exploit. And then I'm gonna go on to describe the Go Exploit algorithm and then show you some results we have in Connect4 and 9x9Go. So Alpha Zero is an algorithm that learns to play two-player zero-sum games by playing games against itself. So within these self-play games, actions are selected by first performing a look-ahead tree search using a variant of Monte Carlo tree search. MCTS begins with a root node that corresponds to the current state in a self-play game. And over the course of a finite number of simulations, the search tree is built out to include promising states that could be reached from the current self-play state. Within each of these simulations, a simulated game is played from the root node and actions are selected using PUCT, where PUCT favors the visit of state action pairs that have large action values Q, large priors P, and few search visits N. The action values Q are obtained by averaging value estimates that are output by the policy value network. And the priors P are obtained from the action probabilities that are output by the policy value network. Once the final simulation of MCTS is complete, alpha zero takes the visit counts over the root nodes actions and converts them into a discrete probability distribution pi. And within the first k moves of the game, the actions that are played during self-play are sampled from the distribution pi. And then after the first k moves, the action that's played is the one that was visited most during search. Once a self-play game is complete, alpha zero takes the states that were encountered during self-play and creates tuples for each of them that consist of the state, its respective search probabilities pi, and the outcome of the self-play game z. These tuples are added to a buffer. And once enough tuples have been added to the buffer, um, a batch of tuples is sampled and is used to update the policy value network. So the outcomes z are used as learning targets for the value head, and the search probabilities pi are used as a learning target for the policy head. Exploration is really important in alpha zero because like any other reinforcement learning algorithm, it needs to visit states throughout the state space and try a variety of actions to learn which states and actions lead to wins. Exploration is incorporated into Monte Carlo tree search, but it has little effect on the actions that are ultimately selected during self play. So to be more specific, the second term within PUCT forms a confidence bound that ensures that state action pairs are visited within the search so long as their prior P is greater than zero and enough simulations are allocated to the search. But this has very little effect on the action that's ultimately selected because the majority of visits within the search are still concentrated on the state action pairs that have large action values and large priors. And so when we finally take the visit counts over the root nodes actions, and sample from them or, or select the one with the most actions, it's not often the action that was solely visited from exploration. So I'm now gonna to talk to you about the two mechanisms that Alpha Zero primarily employs to bring about exploration during self-play. So the first mechanism is Dirichlet noise. So each time Alpha Zero performs Monte Carlo tree search and uses PUCT action selection, it obtains the priors from the outputs of, from the action probabilities output by the policy value network. But the actions that come off of the, the root node have their priors perturbed by a noise vector that's sampled from the Dirichlet distribution. The Dirichlet distribution is a distribution over discrete probability distributions, which I know is a little confusing, but to make it more clear, alpha zero samples a discrete probability distribution D from the Dirichlet distribution, and then computes perturbed priors by forming a uh, weighted average between the sampled noise vector 
and the action probabilities that are obtained from the policy value network. Alpha zero parameterizes the Dirichlet distribution in such a way that the noise vectors that are sampled concentrate most of the probability on one of the actions, but the distribution itself is not biased towards noise vectors that have higher values for any particular action. So the effect that this has is the, the prior that may have the, the action that may have had the largest prior when, when, when we obtain them from the policy value network may no longer be the action that has the largest perturbed prior. And so this affects the distribution of visit counts during search, which ultimately affects the action that's either sampled or selected during self-play. The second mechanism that Alpha Zero uses for exploration is action sampling. So as I was, ex as I was explaining earlier, once MCTS is complete and it returns the search probabilities pi, within the first k turns of the game, of the self-play game, the action that's played is sampled from the, pi from the distribution pi. And then afterwards, the action that's played is the one that was visited the most during self-play, visited the most during search. So this action sampling enables alpha zero to try a variety of actions and to encounter new states. But this, is, but this exploration is only concentrated at the beginning of games because it only happens within the first k moves. These two exploration mechanisms bring about an exploration exploitation trade-off. On the one hand, the stochasticity of these mechanisms helps alpha zero discover new states and to try a variety of actions, which enables it, which gives it the opportunity to learn a better policy. But on the other hand, the stochasticity causes players to often take actions that aren't in their best interest. So this produces self-play games whose outcomes do not reflect the true values of the states that are encountered during the games. So these, this creates these learning targets that are biased by exploration. And when we use them to update our policy value network, it, it causes the policy value network to learn inaccurate value estimates and, and then a poor policy. So this is a trade-off that AlphaZero needs to manage. With this in mind, um, we, we developed the following guiding principles when developing Go Exploit. So first, we wanted our new exploration strategy to visit and revisit states throughout the state space to learn their values and a good policy. So essentially, we wanted our exploration strategy to perform good exploration. Second, we wanted our, our, um, we wanted our learning strategy, or we wanted our exploration strategy to limit exploration's biasing of learning targets. So this alludes to the previous slide where I was explaining that the exploration that's the, the stochasticity that's introduced in alpha zero creates poor learning targets for learning. So we wanted to develop we wanted to develop an exploration strategy that's still able to perform good exploration, but doesn't suffer the consequences of creating these poor learning targets. And then finally, we wanted our exploration strategy to keep track of states of interest that could benefit from further exploration and to revisit them reliably. So to achieve this, we took inspiration from Go Explore. So Go Explore is an algorithm that achieved really good results in the single agent setting of Atari. And it maintains an archive of previously visited states along with the highest scoring trajectory that was used to get from the start state of the game to the given state. The algorithm then samples states from the archive and then loads them into their simulator and then takes exploratory actions to both encounter new states that it could add to the archive and also to, to find higher scoring trajectories as well. So we took inspiration from Go Explore in, in creating Go Exploit by also creating an archive of states of interest. And then the main difference between Go Exploit and Alpha Zero is that in Alpha Zero, it always starts its self-play games from the start state of a game and then plays out a complete can plays out a complete game. But in Go Exploit, we sample the start state of our self-play trajectories from this archive of states of interest with probability one minus lambda. And then we start this we, we start the trajectories from the start state of the game with probability lambda. Then the self-play trajectories carry on just like they would in alpha zero. A search is then performed, which informs the search probabilities pi and then actions are either sampled or selected based off of 
the action that was visited the most. Um, then once the policy value network is updated, the newly encountered states of interest that were, that were just observed in the, in the previous um, self-play trajectories are added to the archive so that they can be sampled in, in later learning steps. Within our, um, within our experiments, we naively, we naively chose um, all states that are encountered during self-play to be states of interest. And we also naively chose to sample states from the archive uni uh, uniformly at random. So we hypothesized that Go exploit would outperform, would, would learn more effectively than alpha zero for the following reasons. So first of all, in sampling, in sampling from the archive um, for, the, for the start state of trajectories, um, Go exploit ensures that it's able to reliably revisit states of interest. And these states of interest that are sampled um, are spread out throughout the state space. So it enables Go exploit to then apply the stochasticity of the Dirichlet noise and the action sampling to different points throughout the state space, rather than it always being from the start state of the from the start from the start um, from the start state of the game. So this enables it to visit more unique states throughout the state space, and then it re reduces its reliance on sampling actions in order to find new unique states. So since it doesn't need as much action sampling, the learning targets that are produced by its self-play trajectories are, aren't um, as biased by exploration. So it enables the policy value network to learn more accurate value estimates and to learn better policies. So to test this hypothesis, we performed some experiments in Connect4 and 9 by 9 go And in these experiments, we, we swept over two parameters. So the first parameter was the start state probability. So the probability of starting self-play trajectories from the start state of the game. And the second parameter was the number of sampling moves. So with alpha zero, the start state probability was always set to one so that it would always start its self-play trajectories from the start state of the game. But we swept over different values of that for, for Go exploit. For each parameter permutation, we ran 30 runs. And within these 30 runs, um, the agent would play evaluation matches against a baseline algorithm of MCTS solver to track learning progress. But the, um, the agent wouldn't just play against one difficulty of MCTS solver, it would play against multiple difficulties. And so by difficulty, I mean that MCTS solver was allocated different amounts of simulations. So the easiest version of MCTS solver that um, that GoExploit and AlphaZero played against was allocated the same number of simulations during MCTS. So in Connect4, um, all three algorithms were allocated 100 simulations. But AlphaZero and GoExploit also played a more difficult version of MCTS solver that was allocated 10 times as many simulations. So in these, um, in these learning plots, we see the performance of GoExploit and AlphaZero against MCTS solver. And the, on the y-axis, um, an average outcome of one would mean that Go Exploit or Alpha Zero would, would win each of their games against uh, MCTS Solver. A value of zero would mean that there would be, the, the average outcome would be a draw, and then negative one would be an average outcome of a loss. So we can see in both of these learning plots that Go Exploit is able to achieve a higher average outcome against MCTS Solver with different amounts of simulations compared to alpha zero, which indicates that it's able to learn more quickly and able to learn a better policy. We also see the same thing in nine by nine go, but much more dramatically. So the same process was used in, in conducting these experiments for go, except 400 learning steps or model updates were allocated rather than 500. But the same process was, was conducted where for each permutation of parameters, 30 runs were conducted, and then the evaluation matches were averaged over 30 runs. And so we see here that Go exploits able to achieve an even higher um, average outcome or win rate against MCTS solver compared to alpha zero than in Connect4. 
So to help explain these good results, um, I'm going to appeal to some of the guiding principles we used when we designed Go Exploit. So first of all, one of the things that we were really trying to accomplish was we were trying to reduce the exploration bias that was present, the, the exploration bias on the, learning, on the learning targets that was present in Alpha Zero. And so to demonstrate that there's less bias on the learning targets in Go Exploit, I'm going, I'm going to show you the results of our parameter sweep that we had in Connect4 for both Go Exploit and Alpha Zero. So in Go Exploit, we see that the parameter settings that had the most success against MCTS solver were the ones that sampled five to 10 moves. So those are the, the green and the yellow lines. So in their, in the, in their self-play trajectories, they would sample for five to 10 moves. Whereas in Alpha Zero, the parameter settings that had the best performance against MCTS solver were ones that had were ones that sampled for the first 10 to 20 moves of their self-play games. So Go Exploit was able to achieve better performance against MCTS solver with fewer, with fewer sampling moves, whereas Alpha Zero achieved worse performance with even more sampling moves. And so there was more stochasticity present in Alpha Zero's trajectories which caused there to be more biasing of the learning targets compared to go exploit. So we think the fact that go so we think the fact that there's exploration that's already built into the go step of go exploit through the sampling of start states reduced go exploit's need for action sampling to visit unique states throughout the state space and then that produced trajectories whose outcomes were less biased by the exploration, enabling the policy value network to learn more accurate value estimates and a better policy. We also hypothesized that Go, that Go Exploit would achieve better results than Alpha Zero because it would visit more unique states. And while it is true that Go Exploit does visit more unique states than Alpha Zero in Connect4 and Go, it's unlikely that this explains much of the improved performance that Go Exploit achieved in, in, in Go because it only visits marginally more unique states than Alpha Zero. So to better understand why, uh, so, to, so to better understand why uh, Go Exploit achieved these better results, we dug deeper into the distribution of visit counts within the state space. So we produced this visualization where we took one run of Go Exploit from Connect4 and one run of Alpha Zero from Connect4. And then we went through all of the states that were visited between both runs and compiled the number of times each of those states were visited by both algorithms. We then produced this visualization where we grouped all of the states by depth in the game tree. So all of the states with, that occurred at the same new move number were grouped together. And then we we shaded, we, we shaded um, the, the proportion of the x-axis that's shaded indicates the proportion of states at a given depth that were visited a given frequency. So to start off very simply, at depth zero, there's only, there's only one state in the game tree, which is the start state of Connect4. And as expected, alpha zero's bar is much, is much darker than Go Exploit because Alpha Zero always starts its self play trajectories from the start state of the game. If we then continue down, we see that Alpha Zero does a very good job of visiting states early on in the game tree, which again makes sense because all of its self play trajectories start from the start state. And then it uses the action sampling to visit a variety of states initially. But then as we get deeper into the deeper into the game, we see that Alpha Zero um, visits fewer and fewer states, and the states that it does visit are only visited once. So if we compare that to Go Exploit, initially it also sees the majority of states, but if we get to this region here, it sees much fewer states compared to Alpha Zero. And that makes sense because when states, when the start states of trajectories are sampled from the archive, they're often deeper in the game tree. Um, they're, they're often deeper in the game tree. So that's why Go Exploit sees many more states deeper in the game tree compared to Alpha Zero. And since 
the start states of trajectories are sampled from previously visited states of interest, we also see that GoExploit is able to revisit states throughout different depths of the game tree, whereas AlphaZero is unable to do that. So we think that the ability of GoExploit to revisit states enables it to learn more accurate value estimates for states, for more states throughout, this, throughout the game tree than compared to AlphaZero. And we also theorize potentially that GoExploit's ability to see states deeper in the game tree may allow it to learn more accurate value estimates deeper in the game tree that it can then back up. And then our last little theory is that um, since the start states are sampled from the archive, the trajectories, the self-play trajectories that are performed by GoExploit are often much shorter than alpha zero self-play trajectories. So GoExploit is able to squeeze in more self-play trajectories within a learning step than alpha zero. So this gives GoExploit more unique learning, learning targets to learn from than alpha zero, which could also potentially speed up its learning. So to summarize, uh, in this presentation, I, I talked to you about alpha zero and its existing mechanisms for exploration and how their stochasticity um, brings about biased learning targets for, for the policy value network to learn from. And so we tried to address this by creating an alternative training strategy called GoExploit that creates this archive of previously visited states. And then by sampling the start states of self-play trajectories from the archive, it's able to reliably revisit states of interest throughout the state space. And then by jumping to these different parts of the state space, it's then able to apply the stochasticity of the Dirichlet noise and the action sampling to then see more unique states throughout the state space. So the go step of sampling the initial state from the archive is itself an exploratory mechanism that then reduces GoExploit's need for action sampling, which then reduces the exploratory bias on the learning targets for the policy value network, enabling it to learn more accurate value estimates quicker than alpha zero. And we were able to see that in the learning plots that I presented for both Connect4 and 9 by 9 Go. So with that, I'll take some questions. Uh, we have a question by Robin. Hi, Alexander. Thanks so much for the talk. That was super interesting. Um, oh, I was just wondering. I was just wondering if um, uh, if you feel like this this method uh, introduces a different type of bias in your exploration, because now you're building off of the trajectories that are already in the replay buffer. So you've kind of um, you're kind of oversampling from those those early choices in the games. So I think it's actually the opposite of what you said, right? Mm -hmm. So if we, um, if we go back to this plot right here, we see that most of the states that are, we see that GoExploit does a much better job of visiting states that are deeper in the game tree compared to alpha zero. And the reason for that is, I think that's, it's a property of Connect4. Connect4 has more and more unique states the deeper you get into the game tree. And so, since we, since we naively chose to include all states that were encountered during self-play, since we, since we added all the states that were encountered during self-play to the archive, most of the states that are sampled for the starts of trajectories occur deeper in the game tree. So I think it's, it's the opposite of what you said. But, but if you look at a game like Go, there's so, the action space is so large that you're not, your replay buffer is not going to cover a huge amount of even the early depth. So you're going to burn in those choices in the early depth because you're going to be continually branching off the the trajectories that that have that early depth. But the, and also the games you're comparing to here, I wonder if there's any effect between like Connect Four and Go Nine by Nine. I mean, Go Nine by Nine is pretty big, but the the difference in magnitude between Go Nineteen by Nineteen and Go Nine by Nine is massive, right? Like in terms of the amount of zeros. So I wonder if that has any effect on the type of analysis that you're doing. Um, just the sheer vastness of the state space of Go 19 by 19. Yeah, like another thing that Mike and I have discussed is also the fact, so like I, I was talking about how Connect4 and Go have the property of getting 
you know, the state space getting larger and larger, the deeper you get into the game. And so we thought it would be interesting to also try a game that has the opposite effect where the state space is largest initially in the game and then gets smaller and smaller to see if, um, to see if you sample start states later in the game has, has an effect versus sampling states earlier in the game to see if that's a property of, um, if to see if the success is a property of the game or if it's a property of the algorithm. Thanks. Oh, hello, Alex. Thank you for the talk. It sounds like sounds like really interesting work, but that's why I'm kind of frustrated because I didn't I, so much of it I didn't understand. You know, it sounds interesting, but I just didn't understand what you were saying. And um, and sure, some of that's my fault, I'm sure. But uh, but um, I, I just want to let you know uh, that that well, every, everyone should know it's hard to explain something. And um, uh, I think you could just do a lot more like writing things on your slides. Like this one we're looking at, I never understood what this was about. And there are, there are things which could have been, the axes could have been labeled and, and there could be a sentence about what I'm supposed to see here and maybe understand. I mean, I know you said some of those things, but often you were, you were saying some things at the same time I was trying to figure out the graph, what, what, the, what, was, what the graph meant. And it was, I, I found it, um, you know, I had the strong feeling you were saying something interesting, but I couldn't tell what it was. Could not tell what it was. Um, so I also want to say that for everyone else who maybe didn't understand what's going on, they they felt it was all their own fault. I think this is this is just we need. You know, it's it's hard to explain things, and uh, it's hard. It's easy to underestimate how how confused people can become. Um, okay, now having said all that, those general things, I want to say one specific thing, which is. Um, I don't know, you, you keep talking about exploration. I don't know that anything here involves exploration as, as I understand it. Um, I mean, you do have a complete model of the world. So there's nothing you're gonna find out by trying something different. Um, I, would not have, I would not use the word exploration to describe what this work is about. And I, th I think that's confusing too. I mean, um, maybe we need a word for this other thing, this planning thing where you need to, diversely sample the states to be update um, with, with, uh, with, with diversity, but it's not, it's not the exploration in the sense of explore, exploit. You're not like doing something to find out something. You, ever, you know everything. Yeah, so I, I know it's, I think you're kind of, I think maybe this, this use of the word explore has become common, but that doesn't mean we should follow it uh, if it's bad. Uh, anyway, I'm I, I find it very confusing, and I, I I would I would advocate never never mixing up. Uh, I mean, you could say, oh, it's like exploration, planning, search control. I mean, the best word we have is search control. You're controlling the planning, you're controlling the search, in order to be be useful, but you're not exploring. You know, there's an analogy, but it's but it's not good to take something analogous and like give it the same name. That doesn't make make things clear. Okay, that's my diatribe, but I, I want to repeat what I started with, which is, this really sounds like it's interesting stuff, and I just, you know, I could have learned more, so I have regret or something. <laughs> well, apologies. I mean, no, I'm sorry I didn't make it clear. Um, as for the point about exploration, though, I think the, I think the point I was trying to make is more that um, by starting, by starting trajectories always from the start state of a game you're there's a certain set of states like there's a, there's states that you're going to be seeing on policy whereas with go exploit by starting by starting this by starting self play trajectories from states sampled from an archive you're visiting states that you wouldn't otherwise really see by starting the trajectories from the start state so like i think it's i think it's really more about the frequencies with which you're visiting states that makes it more exploratory but i mean we can disagree about the vocabulary i guess oh we have two hands raised uh sorry if i don't pronounce your name right but joel 
and high. So um, in your plots, in your comparisons, I saw that there were like 400 learning steps and small stuff like that. Um, do you think Go Exploit will like continue, continue being always much better than normal Alpha Zero? Or give enough train enough learning steps, Alpha Zero could match Go Exploit. So I I agree with you that ideally we would run this for way longer to see how um, both like to see the asymptotic win rates of both algorithms. Um, but I think I think I think if we chose a big enough game like like Go for example, and we were let it we we allowed it to run for long enough. Um, there would definitely be the potential for Go Exploit to learn better policies because it's it's not confined to the narrow set of states that are seen within Alpha Zero. Like again, within Alpha Zero, you're always starting from the same self-placed state, and since the stochasticity takes place near the beginning of games, you're 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 seeing a much smaller set of states compared to Go Exploit. So seeing the greater seeing a greater part of the state space within Go Exploit and revisiting more states enables Go Exploit, I think, to potentially learn a better policy because it's able to get more accurate value estimates and it's able to, to produce trajectories whose outcomes aren't as affected by the stochasticity of, of action sampling. So I think, I, think it, I think it's still an open question. Like I, I think ideally, if we were able to run this for longer, we'd be able to answer that question. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the the only way to be sure would be running for longer, right? Yeah. Because while it does explore more states, um, it's not that clear that it's also exploring um, states that happen, you know? Like, you, you can be exploring states that uh, a, a good policy would end up never dealing with, and so that can that wouldn't be that that useful, but yeah, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Matthew? Hi, uh, that was a fun talk. Um, while you were answering Robin's question, just something I'd like to clarify. Are you selecting start states from the archive? Is it sort of just random across all states in the archive? That's what it sounded like when you're answering Robin's question. I just like to clarify that. Yeah, so like we, we decided to take a completely naive approach where states that were sampled from the archive were sampled uniformly at random. But I, there, in future work, you could definitely work on um, a different sampling strategy. So like using count-based sampling or just anything else to identify states of interest that could benefit from further exploration, which could definitely right. help the training, yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. Robin, you have your hand up. Hey, I don't mean to hog the mic. If other people want to go, please do. And if not, um, why? what about uh, Dirichlet, using Dirichlet all the way through? Like, I've always wondered why Dirichlet has to be limited to the first step, like you said. And um, But if they, if they added some Dirichlet with the, and the temperature goes down as, as the training proceeds, right? So the Dirichlet becomes less um, diffuse. So I think you're, you're, you're mixing up two things right now. So the, the temperature pertains to the action sampling. So that's what essentially, that's, that's so the, the, the change of temperature ensures that actions are sampled proportionally to the MCTS visit counts within the first so many moves. And then afterwards, by changing the temperature, you're just choosing the action that had the highest probability in the search probabilities. So that's, that's the temperature, which has to do with the action sampling. But then for the Dirichlet noise, um, yeah, like the Dirichlet noise is only applied to the actions that come off the root node. And I think the reason that they do that is because the, it's, it's only the visit counts over the root nodes actions that ultimately influence the action selection. So perturbing the priors later on wouldn't really have much, in a, much of an effect on the, the action that was ultimately selected or sampled. So maybe perturbing the priors deeper in the search tree could help you encounter new states within the search that could maybe help you back up different values that, that ultimately affect the, the action values, for example. But I don't think it would have much of an effect on the, 
the search visit distribution that's that's used to um, affect this, the selection of actions within self-play. So are you critiquing the choice to pick the node with the highest visit count? Are you saying that that wouldn't that that there could be a better choice there? No, I don't. I'm not really critiquing that. I think I'm. I think I'm more just critiquing the fact that the. Like I think I'm more just pointing out that there is this trade-off where, the stochasticity helps you encounter new states, but on the other hand, it produces trajectories where the outcome of the self-play game, doesn't necessarily correspond to the true values of the states that were played, and so this creates poor learning targets for the policy value network. And so the stochasticity is the problem. It's not specifically the Dirichlet noise or the, um, or the sampling of actions. It's just the fact that their stochasticity creates these poor learning targets. So the fact that we're, in, the fact that we're creating e exploration through the sampling of actions from the archive reduces our need for that stochasticity which then creates learning targets that are less biased by exploration. Okay, thanks. Matthew, you can go ahead. Hi, I guess I just have another follow-up question. So um, on that note, is there actual can you, uh, I guess, elaborate on what exactly is the difference between sort of this algorithm and the alpha zero beyond, like, is it purely just the difference in the starting states from the archive? Or did you, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit clear, unclear on exactly how you altered the exploration moving on from the start state. Sure. So, so in alpha zero, um, the self-play trajectories always start from the start state. So lambda would be one, essentially. Um, in, in, in Go Exploit, we also maintain this archive of previously visited states. And so when we start our self-play trajectories, we sample from the archive to determine that start state of the trajectory with probability one minus lambda. So we found that Go Exploit performs best when the when it samples from the when it samples the start state from the archive with probability like 0.9. So most of the time it's it's starting its self-play trajectories from states that are not the start state. So that is itself exploratory because the states that are being sampled are states that it wouldn't otherwise see. I mean, if we were to start all the trajectories from the start state of the game and then uh, and then behave on policy, we wouldn't revisit most of the states that were that are stored within the archive. So sampling the start states from the archive helps us visit states that we wouldn't otherwise see, which is why I call it exploratory. Okay, great. So just to confirm it, it's sort of, once the algorithm starts, they're similar. It's interesting to note the difference in performance would just be due to the underlying start state distribution changes. When you change that underlying start state distribution it has all of these knock-on effects, yeah. uh, so, allows better performance. Yeah, so just to, to, to elaborate on that, like the fact that we're changing the start state distribution, which introduces exploration, reduces our need for the stochasticity of action sampling during the playing out of the trajectories. And so since there's less stochasticity there, then the outcomes of the self-play games more often align with the true values of the states that were played during those trajectories. And so really cool. So then the Thanks. policy value network is able to learn from more accurate, uh, from, yeah, from more <laughs> accurate um, learning targets, essentially. Thanks. That's really cool. Roshan. Um, hey, Alex. Um, so based on the explanation that you just gave, I was wondering, so all of these games are deterministic. Um, but if you had slight amounts of stochasticity, then it becomes even more like hard to, like, you know, when you're sampling from the database, uh, it, you know, that would be even harder to reach without the database, right? Because it might, yeah. So do you have any uh, thoughts on whether that makes your uh, approach better or worse when there's a little bit of stochasticity? Um... I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Like we, uh, if, if there's stochasticity in the game, 
Um, I think it really depends on whether um, the stochasticity would cause there to be like, I, I think I think the main question is if if the states that we're sampling from the archive are like I think I think what the question becomes like there would need to be some sort of like weighting of like I think that's where the sampling of the archive like the way in which we sample starts from, states from the archive would would come into play. So like right now we're we're sampling uniformly at random, but if there's stochasticity in in the game, then I think the way in which we sample start states from the archive should try to reflect those transition dynamics and the stochasticity so that we see states that are more often to be encountered within the game um, more often during our self-play trajectories. Um, and I have maybe a related follow-on question. So uh, so when you're sampling states from the archive, is is it um, could I think about it as like when you're doing MCTS rollouts that at some point you just put a pin on a certain position and then do multiple branches from there, right? Because effectively when you sample um, a state from your archive, it's as if you had gone back to that uh, to that rollout um, and then gone a different path, right? At a certain point. So yeah. is that like a way of thinking about it so that... Uh, um... yeah. yeah, no, like I think, yeah. So like like you're saying, like in when when roll, rollouts are performed so that you can get a good value estimate, right? Like you, you, you roll out all these random simulated games and then if you average them, it gives you a good it gives you a better value estimate. And I think it's, I think the, the, the similarity here is that by sampling states from the archive, we're, we're increasing our probability of revisiting states, which is really important because if you, if you encounter a state in only one self-play game, it's very likely that the outcome of the game is not gonna be representative of the value of the state. And so by, by, by increasing the probability of revisiting states, we then increase the probability of having more accurate value estimates for those states. So like, yeah, it, it's kind of like a rollout and, and then we're playing out a different trajectory, which gives us another learning target to learn from. Robin? So I was wondering how you might um, answer the question of how this performs in different um, uh, games of different complexity. Like, would you have to go all the way with a massive data center to test it out on a full 19 by 19? Or what, how, is there something you do in between to see? Because I'm curious if, this, if the state space complexity of the, game, of the problem um, has any bearing on the on which which methods are effective? So I'm not, I'm not sure I fully understand your question. Like, are you saying that like the complexity of the game would make it impossible to store an archive of like all the states, or like like what, what? Can you clarify? Yeah, like the properties of the game tree of Go 19 by 19 may be so different from the smaller games that different approaches make more sense for them. I'm not sure, but I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, if, 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 if we thought that might be the case, I guess we would have to run a full massive test or like, is there some way we could check its scaling properties according, like, according to how complex the game is? Because yeah, I keep going back to the complexity of the full code game versus say any, any conclusion we can draw by, by Connect4. For example, in Connect4, it'd be, you'd revisit the same states early in the tree many, many times naturally. And in Go 19 by 19, that might almost never happen. You may know, almost never have the same board state at, at, a, at a even, a sm, uh, even a fairly small depth. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think ultimately, like the, the main, the main choice that we make um, in this algorithm, like there's two choices we make. It's um, which which states we include in the archive and how we sample states from the archive. So if a game has a different sort of game tree, the way in which we sample states from the archive or the way in which we decide which states are included in the archive could have dramatic effects on the performance of the algorithm. So we just wanted to keep it very simple and just include every state that's encountered in the archive and to sample them uniformly at random. And we just chose connect four and nine by nine go because 
you know, they were small enough where we could conduct experiments in a reasonable amount of time. But I think it would be interesting to try different games with different properties of game trees to see if it does hold. If the, if that it, makes sense. I mean, it seems like you're trading off more exploration down near the root for additional extra exploration deep in the depths, building on top of existing tra trajectories, yeah. which which I, I feel may be a good trade off in certain shapes of game trees, but maybe it might not in other shapes of game trees. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, agreed. Like I, that's something that we do want to work on in the future. Thanks. Awesome talk. Fascinating. Thanks.